Hey guys, what is up? This is Stephanie, aka The Limitless Babe, reminding you today and every day that you are limitless. Hey. <laughs> so today I want to talk about uh, a little step deeper than a topic that we had not too long ago. I want to talk about, again, diving deep into who you are. So a few videos ago, we talked about who are you, right? Like, at your core, soul level, who are you, right? Okay, now that you've got that out of the way, now I want you to take it even one step deeper and think about why are you? Why? Why do you think the way that you think? Why do you have the limiting, blah, 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 blah. The limiting beliefs that you have? Mm, why do you operate the way that you do? Why do you react the way that you do? Um... What has happened in your life that has created certain um, shadow parts of you, I would like to say. All right. So this is super important to acknowledge, especially when we are going into new relationships, right? And if you follow my channel, I would venture to say that you've at some point experienced some type of abuse, trauma, um, less than ideal situation. And keep in mind, like, Trauma doesn't have to necessarily be any type of like physical abuse. Trauma can just be any type of unfair situation that you've been through that affected how you view the world. You know, trauma is anything that affects your view and perspective on the world. Okay. So again, beyond thinking about just, you know, who am I? What are my passions? What are like, who was I when I was born? Because right, when, the question when I asked you, like, who are you? I really wanted you to tap into who you were created to be in this world and who the most purest, authentic version of you is, right? That's amazing. Now I'm asking you to now look at who you've become after society, after trauma, after all the external situations have dumped all the garbage on you, okay? So- that's the why are you now, right? And how do you figure that out, right? Like, how do I figure out these things about me? Well, I have three main ways that I like for myself and that I suggest strongly for you. You figure out what works best for you, though. For me, I would say the first way is speaking to a therapist, <laughs> a therapist, a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever you need. Um, I have said it in the past and I will stand by that comment that I don't think there's a person alive that could not benefit in some way from speaking to a therapist throughout points in their life. I'm not saying that you need to talk to one every day, every week, um, anything like that. But I am saying that once in a while in our lives, we go through things and we have experiences that it's just really beneficial to be able to bounce those experiences and how it has shaped us and affected us and what we feel about it off with another person. And while we like to do that with our friends and our family, the thing is that like, unless you have that really solid friend who can be unbiased and who can tell you like it is and can tell you, you know, where you're incorrect or where the situation was incorrect or where the other, like you need someone who can come at it so devil's advocate, so unbiased. And the reality is that the people that love us sometimes have a hard time doing that. Sometimes they think that they can't do that, or maybe you react poorly to it from them. But if it was coming from an external source that you're not so close, that's not so close to the problem, they can see it more. I'm sorry that I didn't shut off my notifications. Let me do that now. They can see it more. Uh, objectively. They can see it more clearly than you or a close friend could. Okay. So definitely I recommend talking to a therapist to help because they can give you insight that you might not even be open to otherwise. Another method that I really like to figure out like what's going on inside is journaling. Um, a lot of times 
you know, this is why I give you guys in a lot of my videos, like I want you to reflect on this or, uh, you know, dive deep and think about this. Like I will tell you guys even journal about this. Like I'm giving you these questions and these tools because I want you to start being able to do that self-reflection work so that you can figure yourself out. Cause the more we know ourselves, the better we can grow. Um, so yeah, you could do that. Um, every day you can just write free, write. You know, something's bothering you free, write. The more you write, especially if you're an overthinker, the more you write, the more you can understand, you know, like you, you have that outlet, you get it out. And then if you reflect back and read it, you can say, oh my God, like that's what's going on inside of me. Huh, holy, holy geez. Yikes. I got to work on that. Um, and also sometimes you just get good answers, you know, um, something that kind of ties into journaling. If you're more on the religious side or the spiritual side that I like to do is I've talked about this before as well. My God box. I talked about this in the, I think it was like the first 11 tips to deal with stress and anxiety. Um, a God box is basically some type of container that you keep the questions that you have for God universe source, whoever it is that you believe in. And that's where you write down like, okay, like this is what's going on in my life. Like guide me, navigate me. Um, a lot of times through that, and this may sound hippy dippy to some of you guys, but I am very hippy dippy and I'm darn proud of it. Um, a lot of times when you ask the questions, like I think that so many people forget how connected we are. Like we're not just here by ourselves. I don't care what you believe in. I really don't. I know what I believe in. I don't care what you believe in, but I do know that you need to believe in something because you are connected. We're all connected spiritually, energetically. And so you need to have a clear, uh, the, the ability to have clear conversations with whatever you believe your creator is. For me, you guys know what that is. I don't have to keep, you know, pushing it down your throat, but you, you talk to whoever your creator is and you just say, this is what I'm struggling with. This is my question. Help. When you invite your creator, your guides to help you navigate through life's challenges, you will be surprised that answers will come to you in the most mysterious, magical ways. And um, you just got to be open. Okay. So that kind of, I would tie that in with journaling. Although that kind of also goes into my next point. So my third way that I like to figure out what's going on inside I talk about it all the time. There's a video on my channel about how I do it to help you out. Uh, meditation. Get really quiet with yourself. And what I've noticed, one thing that I've really noticed for me is that it's most effective for me first thing in the morning. Why? Because first thing in the morning, I'm not tainted and filtered by the things that I've consumed. Like I haven't listened to anything on YouTube yet. I haven't, you know, turned on the radio. I haven't had any conversations with anybody. When my mind is its purest, right when I wake up is the best time for me to meditate. Even if that means like, let's say you live with somebody and like, it's a little challenging for you to like, like, I don't know, for whatever reason, it's hard for you to like have that quiet time. Okay. Before you actually open your eyes, like say you wake up and you're like, oh, okay, I'm awake. Stay where you are and just get real quiet with yourself for a few minutes and just let your brain and your mind clear and let your intuition speak. Okay, let that's a great opportunity and a time to let your creator, your source, the universe um, speak down into you and download the answers that you've been looking for. Okay. Um, I feel like that's when I get a lot of my answers for sure. And like I said, when I do it first thing in the morning without any distractions, it's probably the most beneficial. Like there have been times when I'm too busy in the morning or something comes up or, you know, my day goes unexpected. And like, maybe like my daughter wakes up earlier than I plan and I have to like navigate that. But when I try to do it later in the day, it's so much harder to clear my mind and get the real message. So if you could do that first thing in the morning, um, super beneficial. Okay. So now why am I telling you to do this? <laughs> well, because like I said, you've been through, let's say theoretically, you've been through some type of trauma, some type of abuse. Um, you're trying to regain yourself and you, you want, you want happiness. You want a relationship. You want to connect with someone. Well, 
how do you really connect with someone if you don't know who you are or why you are or why you do the things that you do? Um, one thing that I've noticed is that obviously like who you are, like knowing that part is super important in like the first stage of dating, because that's what you're presenting. Like you want to present your most authentic, truest self, because ultimately that's who's always with you, right? That's your core. That's your spirit. That's your soul. That's what the other person is going to get day in and day out, regardless of the ebbs and flows that's there at the baseline. But keep in mind, another thing that that person is going to get is what you've been through. If you don't resolve that stuff, and even if you do resolve that stuff, let's be real, there's some residual stuff that stays with you for a while. You know, true healing just takes time. It takes work and it takes time. It takes intentionality. But time is like the thing that you can't control. You can control the work. You can control the intentionality. You can do all the things within your power. But ultimately, the final healing just takes time. It's just the way it is. So with that said, like your person eventually is going to have to deal and navigate with certain things that are certain aspects of your personality that maybe you don't even love or that you're working on, right? And it's way easier for someone that you love to be able to navigate a relationship with you if they know what it is that you deal with, if they understand what it is that you need from them, and if they understand how you react to however they go through life. Because here's the thing, guys, like I think a lot of people go into relationships thinking, oh, well, you know what? Like we just must not be good for each other because we bump heads here, we bump heads there, or this doesn't work. But the reality is that you are two completely different people. There's no two people that are exactly like, so you're two different people, two different life experiences, two different sets of values and morals and um, guidances in, in your life and experience. Like, I think I said experiences already. Sorry if I repeated that, but you're just two very different people that now have to learn each other and how to blend yourselves with each other. Like some people can do it seamlessly, but some people need a little bit of help. And the most important tool for that I find is communication. Well, communication and this that I'm teaching you right now, you have to know, there's the phrase, know thyself. It's probably the most important thing in a relationship. Probably, I would say even before communication, because you can't communicate about something that you don't understand. If you don't know who you are, if you don't understand why you do the things that you do, how the hell are you supposed to effectively communicate with somebody else, right? Like, how can I tell you what I need or why I did whatever I did if I don't know myself? And you know what? When someone doesn't know themselves, that's when you get the answers of, oh, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say. Or they just stay real quiet. These things happen. And it's not to say that that's a bad person. No, it's... Some people just don't know. They don't know that they have dealt with things. A lot of people, um, especially like I'm very fascinated by this topic, like avoidant personalities. There's anxious, secure, avoidant, disorganized. Avoidant people don't feel safe to deal with their emotions, to deal with all the things that they've processed or that they've been through. Not processed because they haven't processed it. So they push it down. They compartmentalize. It. They put it in a box and they put it in the closet and they just never look at it again. So those people, they're not bad people. They just don't know. They don't want to know what it is that's going on inside them. And the thing that stinks here is that you can't force that. You cannot force someone else to decide to open that box and deal with it and communicate with you. And that's where a lot of relationships, unfortunately, fall apart. Um, that's what makes a lot of communication difficult and challenging. Um beyond also the unwillingness to really hear and listen to the other person and see their perspective. But fast forwarding a bit, if you can get to the point of knowing yourself, at least you're doing your part. Now, whether or not the other person on the other end is willing to do their part, that's up to them. You know, again, you cannot control anyone. The only person that you can control is yourself, but 
don't you think you owe it to yourself to do your part so that at the end of the day, whether a relationship works or doesn't work, you know that you did your part. You did your best. You explained your situation. And that doesn't mean that you're always going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that you're always going to like be able to effectively say what you're feeling because sometimes we don't know what we're feeling. Like I look at my daughter half the time and I, I'm trying to teach her all of these tools, right? Like I'm trying to give her like a head kickstart into life and like expressing her emotions and understanding, okay, like what's going on inside? What's going on in here? And she'll tell me like, I feel sad. Why do you feel sad? I don't know. Dude. Do you know how many times I say that to myself? I, I feel bad, but I don't know why. It's okay. Give yourself grace. Take advantage of the tools that I gave you. Therapy, journaling, God box, meditation. Take advantage of these tools and really start to allow yourself to figure it out. Okay? Um, I feel like I had so much more that I wanted to talk about this topic, but I've completely forgotten but what I invite you to do and encourage you to do today, um, you know, the therapy thing, I can't force you. I would suggest though, if you are battling something, if you notice a pattern in your life where like relationships don't work out because of A, B, C, or D, or you, um, you know, you have a hard time with emotional intimacy, like I would definitely recommend talking to a therapist. Um, ooh, I just reminded myself that there was something that I wanted to go back into. And now I forgot it again because that's how my mommy brain works. Give me a second, guys. Let me let me pause and think about what I wanted to say. Okay, so I went back to my notes. <laughs> and actually what I decided that I'm going to do because this topic came to me this morning, right after my meditation. And so because I wasn't ready to record, I was, you know, doing other things. Also, I was in my pajamas and just, you know, all the things. I um I made an audio note about it. So I'm actually just going to attach that audio recording at the end of this video so that you guys can hear the whole message in its entirety of like where this concept came from. But yeah, um, you know, my first tip, obviously, if you you want to do all this stuff, is definitely like talk to a therapist get into your journal, start a God box and meditate. I think that those are going to be your best ways to figure out who you are. And again, like you're going to hear in the audio recording, you know, when you know yourself and uh, when you know who you are at your core, like we talked about in that previous video, that's great for the, let's get started. Let's start dating. Let's see if we like each other. But when you get to the point of wanting to take the relationship a little bit further, and really invest in someone and build that emotional intimacy, this is where a lot of the hiccups come because this is where your messy stuff comes in. Because once you feel that connection, you really like somebody, sometimes it's harder. And that's when a lot of your triggers are going to bubble to the surface, right? Because that's when, you know, we're in real life situations. Like it's no longer that honeymoon phase. Now it's like, okay, this is real life. And um, when you do this, I feel this. And, and it's not your fault and it's not your responsibility, but because you care about me, I'm sharing this with you because maybe you can help me by navigating this way. And while you do that, I'm going to keep working on me though. You never stop working on you. You don't just expect the other person to cater to you and that's it. Like, well, this is just how I am and you need to deal with it. No, this is how I am. If you could help me in this way while I work on me that would be beneficial, but you keep working on you. You got to work on yourself. Okay. Especially my, my loves, if you've experienced trauma or abuse, like you're not broken. I will never say you're broken, but there are pieces of you that need smoothing out. There are pieces of you that were wrinkled. I, I really like that way of saying it. <laughs> Good job, Steph. There are pieces of you that have been wrinkled and now you need to iron it out but you have to do it. Nobody else can do that for you. Now, if someone really loves you, they're going to be patient with you. Yes. They're going to offer you grace, but keep in mind, they're not going to be patient forever. If you're not doing the work, like I could tell you from my own personal experience, if I'm dating somebody and I know that they're struggling with something and they communicate with me, you know what I mean? If they communicate with me and tell me this is, this is what's happening for me. Yeah, I'm going to give you the grace. I'm going to give you the opportunity to figure it out. I'm going to give you the opportunity to work on it. And I'm going to try my best 
to help you in any way that I can that doesn't sacrifice me at my core. You know what I mean? And I'll be patient for a while. But if I see that you just keep using that excuse, but you're not actually doing anything for yourself or for us, then I got to cut you loose. You know what I mean? So I just, guys, if you want to change your life, you got to start here. You got to start by knowing who you are, why you operate the way you do, why you think the way you do, and why you react the way you do. And you got to start communicating effectively about it and doing the work. Okay. So again, as I said before, um, because I really like how I worded everything this morning, I'm going to attach that audio portion. Now, if you want to listen to it, you know, you can just listen to that. There'll be no video. And, um, you know, I hope that you found this helpful. I hope you find this beneficial. I hope this changes your life, you know, and as always, if there's anything that you guys want to talk about, if there's any questions that you have or anything that you could maybe use a processing buddy on navigating, please like shoot me a message, um, the limitless babe at gmail.com. Um, you can DM me on Instagram at the limitless babe. You can drop me a comment below. Also, while we're on the topic, please like, I love and value you so much. Please love and value me back in return. Help the channel grow by subscribing, by liking this video, by sharing it with someone that you think could benefit. And um, yeah, let's let's help each other. Let's help each other blossom and grow and live our best life because ultimately that's my number one desire for you and for me. All right. I love you guys so much. I am here for you to support you and to help you navigate through your challenges. And I am here to encourage you today and every day to stay limitless. Love you guys. Bye. Okay. So now that we have done the work and taken the time to journal and figure out who we are, now it's time to take it one step further and really figure out why we do what we do. What makes us tick? What made us think the way that we think and behave the way that we think. So when you're dating someone, and this, this is really important when you start dating, because there's that phrase, know thyself. Like if you don't know who you are and why you do the things you do and why you operate the way you do, how can you ever really find intimacy, like true a connection and emotional intimacy with another human being. And here's the thing. You don't really, in the beginning stages of dating, when you're still trying to figure out, like, do I even like this person? This stuff might not be as important or might not seem as important. I mean, it's always important. But as you get deeper, now you want to actually connect with this person. You want to actually be able to develop a relationship. You want to actually be able to communicate effectively. And whenever issues arrive, because I promise you, in every single relationship, an issue will arise. There's no way to avoid it. You are two totally different people learning how to do life together. There's going to be differences of opinions. There's going to be different ways of wanting to do things, different ideas. And you got to learn how to work together. But again, you also not only have to know who you are and what you want, you have to know how you react to certain situations. And if you know yourself deeply, one, that gives you the ability to work on your shit. That gives you the opportunity to fix whatever things about your own personality and your own limiting beliefs and the things that are holding you back that you observe that you don't like. And two, while you are doing that, because you need to do that, that's like a non-negotiable. We are not here just to skate by. We're here to grow and heal and become better every day. I firmly believe that. So two, while you are doing that stuff, you're able to effectively communicate to your partner, hey, just so you know, this is why I do what I do. When I do this, this is what I need. When this happens, this is what I'm thinking. And I'm working on it. But if you could do this in the meantime, while I work on it, that would be super helpful. And if you don't want to, I understand. And maybe we're a match and maybe we're not. And that's okay. But this is where I'm coming from. 
And I just wanted you to know that. Oh, oh, oh.